I just listened to a, a really fun podcast by Joyce Myers, and it was entitled, What to Do When God Doesn't Pick You. This is something that I've written a couple blogs about over the last year, when something that you want ends up falling in the lap of somebody else. What do you do? How do you respond? <laughs> Talk about flaring you up into an animal planet moment. What usually happens when we give power to a circumstance, just like that, let's just say you want something, you really, really want something, and that thing that you want ends up going to somebody else. Now, there's going to be a conflict inside when we, when we have that hunger and thirst to showcase the highest version of who we want to be. And then we also have the serpents uh, that are slithering around that sabotage that best version of who we want to be. So there's two things going on here in the brain when that happens. There's actually something that's referred to top-down thinking versus bottom bottom up thinking. Top down thinking is the thinking that uh, rejoices with those who rejoice. That basically it's it's the space that uh, we're able to remain and, and truly have excitement for other people's accomplishments, even if it doesn't fall in our lap. I remember several months ago, um, I call them shower epiphanies, and I was just talking to the Lord and I said, hey, listen, this would be awesome if you can give this to me in the new year. Grant me the ability to truly rejoice over another human being's success, over my own. Even if it's something that I wanted and they get it. And I, and I, I was just praying in the grace to be able to truly rejoice when somebody else gets something, even if I want it. Because come with me on this a little bit. Can you imagine if you have the ability to stay in a joyful place in the midst of that circumstance when God gives something you want to somebody else. What Joyce was using in this podcast was the familiar story, and, and it's a comparison between Noah and Abraham in the Old Testament. Um, Noah, there, there's to seal a covenant, there was, there was consistently uh, a, an act that would take place in order to seal a covenant. Well, for Noah, God sent a rainbow. For Abraham, he sent a circumcision. So, so many times in life, in fact, I pose this question to those people that are listening to this video, how many times have you been seeking a rainbow and God gives you a, circum a circumcision in your life? Circumcision is simply a cutting away of the flesh, something that uh, you, you desperately wanted or was attached to. Now, an attachment is an emotional state of clinging due to the belief that without some thing, person, or outcome, you cannot be happy. You cannot have that sense of inner peace, inner confidence, because you've attached yourself to something outside of you. So a circumcision, metaphorically speaking, is simply a pruning. It's John chapter 15. Uh, remain in me. And it's, it's pruning for growth. So you can remain uh, more intimately with Jesus Christ of Nazareth as you move forward in this world so that you can enter into that top-down thinking versus the bottom-up thinking. When we're in that space of the bottom-up thinking, we actually only have three choices of response. This is the animal planet zone. This is where we kick and scream our way through circumstance because we want something that somebody else has or just like that title says, how do you respond when God gives something you wanted to somebody else? <laughs> this is a great reflection as we jump into 2018. So our, our invitation here is to raise our eyes to heaven. And metaphorically, the brain responds that way as well. When we lift up our eyes, that actually shifts us into the frontal cortex. This is the place where all things are possible. This is the place of the pause. This is the place of the snap. I've, I've done uh, some blogs on the snap to stop, to notice, to ask questions, and to pivot. How does this behavior or this, this experience um, support the person I want to be? And it gives us the opportunity to invite divine grace. Dear God, help me to rejoice with those who rejoice. So I encourage you to reflect on your response when somebody else gets something you want because this is an incredible opportunity to up your EQ, your emotional acuity, your ability to be aware of your own emotions, manage your own emotions, 
in a way that honors the person that you're committed to being, as well as being aware of other people's emotions and manage their emotions. As they're rejoicing over this uh, advancement or accomplishment in life that you wanted, that it gives you that opportunity to pause, stay in the top-down thinking, ask yourself some effective questioning. What is it that I'm forgetting about myself? that is spinning me out of control and keeping me captive in the bottom-up thinking. Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm and don't allow yourself to be burdened by the yoke of slavery. Many times we have a yoke of slavery when we resist the experience of allowing the Holy Spirit to help us rejoice when other people get a rainbow and we have a circumcision. You can be sure that, that Abraham wasn't psyched when he got his circumcision, when he got the circumcision call versus the rainbow. Perhaps he was thinking in his mind, uh, what's up with this? Noah got a rainbow. I get a circumcision? How many times have you thought that in your life? <laughs> so let's rise up and out of those lights off behavior and turn the lights on in our interior castle in 2018. For more information, more quick tips, please visit me at Lauren E. Miller dot com edgegodin.com and enjoy your gift of life enjoy practicing living from the top down versus the bottom up god bless